your own. Let me get the light. Oh, yeah, yeah. So I can be in the light as you're in the light. <laughs> walk in the light. <laughs> yeah, walk in the light. Wear the light. So we've come out here tonight to preach the truth of the Word of God. Hallelujah. Because there's too many lies in Murfreesboro. There's not enough love and too many lies. See, if you actually love somebody, you'll tell them the truth. You certainly wouldn't lie to them, especially your children. God forbid there'd be any parents out here that actually lie to their children and tell them that Santa Claus is coming to town or some other such filthy nonsense. The Bible says right here, A lying tongue hateth those that are afflicted by it, and a flattering mouth worketh ruin. Yes, a, a lying tongue hate those that are afflicted by it. And I know that, there, I hope there's no children out here today that are going to end up crying because their parents lied to them. Hateful parents that lie to their children and try and tell them that Santa Claus is coming or the Easter Bunny is going to come around and, and, and lay eggs, a rabbit that lay eggs. I don't know where that comes from. Actually, I do know where that comes from. It's wicked and an abomination to God. See, the Bible says to raise your children in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Is that what you're doing? Is that what parents in Murfreesboro are doing today? Raising their children to love and fear God. If you're not, you're going to get a big fat F for your parenting. There's a, there's a Bible. You, you can go anywhere and get a Bible. A Holy Blessed King James Bible, you can probably get it for free. Raise your children in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Teach them the law of God, the statutes of, of the Lord, the ways of the, the ways of the one who created them. The ways of the one that's going to judge the entire world. That's, that's what you need to teach your children. That's what you need to teach your spouse. That's what you need to teach your friends and neighbors, the Word of God. Jesus said to go into all the world and preach the gospel into every creature. That's, that's what's good for the world. Hallelujah. See, the purpose of, of your life on earth here is not to make yourself happy. That's a lie of the devil. You think your life is about making you happy? Ha! You've been lied to. You swallowed the lie. You think life is about making you happy? It won't work. The Bible says right here, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. That's why you're here. Your whole duty is to fear God and keep his commandments. Are you doing it, or are you shirking your duties? Parents' jobs are to raise their children to love and fear God. Are you raising your children pop properly in the eyes of God, or are you failing God and your children? That's why we got so many problems in America. Ch parents don't raise their children to love and fear God and to love their neighbors, as Jesus said. But again, in Ecclesiastes chapter 12, it says, Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment and every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. So you may think you had some secret things that nobody knows about, but God knows about it. You may think you've done some secret things and you didn't get caught, you didn't go to get jail, you didn't get charged, but God's got it all written down. The Bible says that the wages of sin is death. And the ultimate death is when you stand before God in judgment. If you stand before God in your sin, you're going to be judged for your sin. If you stand before God in your sin, you're going to be cast out of His presence in your sin. And then you're going to spend eternity in the everlasting lake of fire and brimstone. You know why? Because of your sin. You need your sin washed away. You need your sins remitted. You need to be born again. And that's only going to happen if you humble your heart toward God in grief and godly sorrow and put your faith in Jesus Christ. Then you're going to have your sins remitted. Nobody gets their sins remitted by going to church. Nobody gets born again because they, they, they sign up in some religious organization. Nobody's going to be born again. Nobody's going to be accepted in the kingdom of God because you did enough good stuff. It's not going to work. You can't make up for your sin. There's nothing you can do about it. Just like here on earth. If you, were, if you stood before a judge and you, were, uh, you had murdered somebody, you can't say, hey, judge, I know I did that one person, but hey, look at all these other people I didn't kill. That's ridiculous. And it's going to be ridiculous on Judgment Day. You're not going to stand before God and say, Lord, Lord, we did so many wonderful works in your name. Lord, Lord, we cast out devils and we fed the poor. That's not going to work. He's going to say, depart from me, ye that work of iniquity, I never knew you. And you're going to be cast in the everlasting lake of fire. All your, all your church service is going to be for nothing. All your, all your tithing, all your giving, it's not going to do a thing for your soul. 
all the times you got up early on Sunday morning, got your whole family in the car, got them all dressed up nice, nice, and took them to the church building. It's not going to do a single thing to save anybody's soul. It may actually make people harder to save because they become self-righteous. They're going to think, well, I've done all this religious stuff. I need to get into heaven. I mean, that's the, that's the deception of the devil, folks. The de deception of the devil says you can be good enough to make up for your sin to go to heaven. That's not going to work. You need to realize you're not good enough to he for heaven. You need to realize you're bad enough for hell. The Bible says that the wages of sin is death, and that's eternal death. That's the wages. That's what you earned. If you die in your sin, God's going to give you what you've earned. Every time you've lied, you've earned death. Every time you got drunk, you've earned death. Every time you've done your drugs, you've earned death. Every time you've looked at your pop pornography, you've earned death. And God's going to give it to you if you die in your sin. That's your wage. And you're going to get paid and paid and paid and paid. That's called hell. God's going to pay you in the flames of hell for all of eternity if you die in your sin. But, but, the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. That's the good news. The good news is that you don't have to get the payment for your sin. The good news is you can get the gift of God, which is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. But he doesn't give it to everybody. God's grace isn't just laying around like, at a, like a sampling at a grocery store where everybody picks it up and says, oh, thank you. He only gives his grace to those that are of a humble heart, of a contrite spirit. If you've got a broken heart toward God for your sin, you realize what a wicked person you are. Human beings are the, are the wickedest thing on the planet. Even the trees and the dirt, they don't disappoint God. The animals and the birds, they, they don't make God angry. They just do what God, God has programmed them to do. But it's people. It's people when they rebel against God, sin against God. They have the law of God written in their hearts and they break it, is what they do. That's why we got so many problems in America, don't you know? The Bible says to be sober-minded. Jesus said to love the Lord your God with all of your heart, soul, mind, and strength. You're supposed to love God with all of your mind. If you actually loved God with all of your mind, you wouldn't fill it for a liquor. You wouldn't fill it for a crack and marijuana. If you loved God with all of your mind, you'd fill it with the word of the Lord, the dictates of God. The doctrines of Jesus Christ, that's what should fill your, God, your, your mind. That's what's pleasing to the Lord. But many people, they just want to make excuses, don't they? They say, oh, I just want to feel good. I want to feel good. That's all people care about. And they, they, don't give, they don't give one lick of concern to actually being good in the sight of God. Forget, don't be all worried about feeling good. You need to actually be good in the eyes of God. And the only way you're going to be, be good in the eyes of God is if you're born again. Through faith in Jesus Christ and repentance towards God. Then you can have the righteousness of Christ. Praise God. See, if you were, if you were born again into the family of God and had the righteousness of Christ, then you would be good in the eyes of God. Instead of being all worried about feeling good. Oh, the Christmas tree feels makes me feel good. Oh, lying to my children about Santa Claus makes me feel good. Wicked, wicked, and selfish. That's what's wrong with America. People are wicked, wicked, and selfish. How many bars we got here on the square? full of wicked and selfish people drinking their alcohol. I'm here to tell you folks, no child feels blessed when they got a drunken parent. When daddy drinks a, a fifth of whiskey or mama drinks a 12 pack, the children don't feel blessed. The children feel cursed because they are. The children are cursed by their parents because their parents love themselves. They don't love their children. The Bible says if you love people, you tell them the truth. And Jesus Christ is the truth. Jesus Christ is the way. Jesus Christ is the life. If you have Jesus Christ, you can have life. The things of the world lead to death. That's why, see, when people indulge in the things of the world, that's why they have shortened lives. People that drink their alcohol shortens their life. People that do their drugs shorten their lives. People that eat and eat and eat and eat and eat. And eat and all of a sudden they're 100 pounds overweight. They got diabetes, they got bad knees, they got all sorts of problems. That, that's me. not life. Excuse me. We're in tr trying to enjoy a holiday celebration with our family. Well, excuse me, I'm trying to preach the word of God. 
I think we all know it well enough. I don't think so. P you wouldn't be worshiping a stupid Christmas tree if you actually knew the word of God and we obeyed it. That's wicked. See, you're choosing wickedness. You need to choose righteousness and holiness. I See, you need you need to raise your children in the nurture and admonition of the I Lord. That's what you need to do. That this is doing nothing. That's what the devil tells me. See, I wouldn't go home until some devil-filled person told me that. It happens every time I come out and preach the word of the Lord. Some hateful, some hateful, self-righteous person comes out and tells me, doing what Jesus Christ told us to do, doing what the okay. the prophets of the Old Testament did, and what the uh, okay. apostles of the New Testament did. It's all wrong. You can't do that. Even though the Bible says, okay. lift up your voice like a trumpet and tell my people their, their iniquities. Okay. Just Would you to stop talking, please? I'm trying to preach Would here. You You're interrupting. Talking. Would you stop no, talking? No, I'm not going to stop talking. I've come, I've come out here I'm to not preach. You son of a bitch. I'm not out here calling people, using foul language in front of the children. What a wicked man. That's what I was preaching about. We need more love in, in Murfreesboro. Look at that wicked middle finger. Look at the haters. See, I'm in the right place. You got to admit, there's haters here. I'm in the right place. People need to be born again. And I do not agree well, with this. Well, your, your, your opinion is, is in the opposition with the word of God. And you are not above God. You're not above God in your self-righteousness. I'm just out here preaching the Bible. And if the devils get all worked up, that's not my problem. You need to get rid of them devils. And the only way to get rid of them devils is, is for you to be born again, made a new creature in Christ. Because all your self-righteousness isn't, isn't going to count for anything on Judgment Day. Your self-righteousness is going to be exposed on Judgment Day. Oh, you can be nice to everybody every minute of your life. You, you could be... You could be the most popular person on Facebook. You could you could be maxed out at 5,000 friends on Facebook. It's not going to make you righteous in the eyes of God. See, that's why we have the Word of God. That's why we don't have to worry about contradictions, because when you have the Word of God, then you have the truth to stand on. If you have the Word of the Lord, then you know truth from error. But most people in America today, they don't know truth from error because they go on their opinion, they go on the culture, they go on tradition. The word of the Lord is the straight stick of the truth. And whatever varies from the word of the Lord is in error and should be abandoned. Praise God. See, the Bible says right here in the book of James chapter 4, it says, from whence come wars and fightings among you? There's a lot of wars and fighting among people in, in America, isn't there today? Come they not hence, even of your lust that war in your members? Yes, because there's lust in America today. That's why we have the wars. Ye lust and have not, ye kill, and de desire to have and cannot obtain. Ye fight and war, ye, and ye ha yet ye have not, because ye ask not. See, people in America today, they don't ask God for holiness and righteousness. People in America today, they ask for material things. They ask to satisfy the lust of their flesh, the pride of their life. I'm, I'm here to tell you, folks, God, is, God will give you what you need. If you're actually born again of the Holy Ghost, if you are a child, child of God, the Bible says that they have never seen the righteous forsaken, nor their children begging bread. Hallelujah. You don't have to be worried about those things. You could just be, you could just be about doing God's business. That's that's the wonderfulness of the Lord. The Bible goes on to say, "Ask ye and ye ask and ye receive not, because ye ask amiss, that ye may consume it upon your lusts." 